And you begin with an account of a previously secret American military report about a massacre of Iraqi civilians by U.S. Marines in Haditha. Why start the book with that incident? Because the Haditha incident really showed the bankruptcy of the old way of war. Uh, I only found out after publishing the book just very recently that after killing 24 civilians that day in this Iraqi village of Haditha, the Marines didn't even file what's called a SIG Act, a Significant Actions Report, reporting it up the chain of command. 24 dead civilians. It wasn't even seen as that different. It was business as usual. And this is the type of war we've been fighting for several years, in fact, as long as this country fought World War II. And it was only in the winter and spring of 2007 that we began operating differently and more effectively. And you write that the United States almost lost the war in Iraq in 2005. Lost? Did the situation get really that bad? Is Haditha is an example of the, the reason we were losing it? We were heading downhill fast. And it's not just my conclusion. Actually, in the book, I uh, reprint a slide from a, a Pentagon study of the war done in the fall of 2006 that states we are losing this war. And I think the thing that really changed the course of the war, oddly, was the midterm elections of 2006, which was like a two before over the head of President Bush. It told him, you are losing this war. You are losing the American people on it. They are not buying what you're selling. And it's no accident that the day after the midterm elections, Donald Rumsfeld was fired as Secretary of Defense. And in the following months, an entirely new chain of command was put in control of the war. Uh, The generals and senior civilians, a new strategy was implemented. And in many ways, in the spring of 07, the war was turned over to the dissidents. Uh, For example, Ambassador Ryan Crocker, reveals in the book that he had essentially opposed the invasion of Iraq um, back back in 2003. Several other people that were brought in to deal with the war as advisors to generals had been opponents of the war or opponents of the way it was being executed. Um, they even brought in foreigners, two of the most important advisors to Petraeus and General Odierno back in, in this period, were pacifist foreigners, one of them a woman, one of them a Palestinian American. Okay. It really showed Americans were finally uh, showing a little bit of humility about how to operate in Iraq and showing a willingness to listen. And that had been lacking for several years in our operations. Now, why do you think the Bush administration was so confident of its own strategy despite what were very clear signs of its failure? Why did it take losing the midterm elections? Uh, It sounds to me like if they hadn't, if Americans had decided to stick with what they already had, uh, for whatever reason, they did when George Bush was reelected, uh, that we probably wouldn't have changed. I think that's right. I think we would have ridden uh, this downhill train for several more months. Um, and eventually, I might have seen the American people just in disgust say, let's get out of there. Might have seen the Iraqis just tell, you know, kick out the Americans. Uh, it was not working. And really, everybody on the ground in Iraq knew it, including the U.S. military. You write that the idea for the surge came from a small number of U.S. officers led by General Petraeus, as well as retired officers, military historians, and conservative defense intellectuals. What did they recognize about the Iraqi conflict that the Bush administration hadn't? Well, it's actually funny because there were people inside the Bush administration who did recognize this, but the word was not getting through. It somehow wasn't being taken on by President Bush. But people around Bush understood this was not working. Um, There were two problems. First, getting the top people to listen, like Rumsfeld. The second thing was coming up with an alternative. Um, It was very difficult to say, here's a different way of going about this. It was very difficult for the military to adjust. And as I show in the book, the entire chain of command involved in this, except for General Raymond Odierno, opposed the surge. Now... It's been suggested that uh, the reason that Rumsfeld remained in office so long is that he was protected because of his relationship with Vice President Cheney. Is that true? Is is that enough of a reason to keep on going on on with a failing policy? I think that was a big part of it. Cheney and Rumsfeld go way back. They're close friends. They bought houses together on Maryland's eastern shore. Uh, They spent a lot of time with each other. And I think Cheney also was uh, interestingly... Uh, the vehicle through which these retired generals, most notably General Jack Keane, began to talk to the White House and said, this is not working. You need to get serious here. And it's really, oddly enough, only in December of '06 that President Bush asserts civilian control of the military. Uh, 
he has a meeting with General Keene and some other people, and they say, you need to stop judging your generals by whether they're, quote, unquote, good guys. You need to start judging them by whether they're militarily effective. And it's only then that policymaking and decision-making on Iraq starts to work. You describe General Ogierno as the true father of the surge. He had to use certain tactics to get the White House to even pay attention to his ideas. Yeah, it was a lot of uh, backdoor dealings, him talking to General Keene, and the regular military, the chain of command, was vigorously opposed to this. At one point, uh, before General Petraeus had been appointed to command uh, the number one slot in Iraq, but when he thought he might be going out, he was talking a lot to General Odierno by telephone. Odierno was already out in Iraq. And General Casey, then the commander in Iraq, uh, sent the word to Petraeus, knock it off, stop talking to Ray. They were telling General Keene, bug out, get out of this, you're a retired general, stop bothering us. The uniformed military, the people in charge at that point, were quite happy to continue on the path they were on. Many of Petraeus' closest advisors went to Iraq extremely pessimistic, and one admiral, Admiral William Fallon, then Petraeus' superior, even sent an admiral to Baghdad in the summer of 2007 to come up with a strategy to replace Petraeus. Yeah, it, it was really striking how isolated these guys were. This was a minority within the military, kind of an insurgency within the military, facing a lot of opposition, even now. There are people in the military kind of say, oh, Petraeus, no, Dierno, that was a flash in the pan. That's not really not what we want to be doing here. Uh, there were a lot of people who would have been happy, I think, to see them fail because, you know, these were the guys who were saying, you're not fighting the war right. These were the dissidents. Uh, it was striking to me that my book, Fiasco, was read by a lot of the people involved in this, and it actually opened a lot of doors for me in Iraq over the last three years. Well, if they still think that Petraeus and Odierno were a flash in the pan, what would they like? A return to the failed policy that preceded, or did they have a third policy approach? They didn't, really. It was more that the Pentagon was kind of asleep at the wheel. There was a lack of seriousness about dealing with this. They were persisting in peacetime policies. They were insisting on protocol like Admiral Fallon. Well, I'm your superior officer, so you need to be polite with me. These were guys out in Iraq who were determined to try to fix a really bad situation. Uh, Maybe they'd been opposed to the war. Maybe they thought it had been run wrong. But they were walking in and saying, look, this is our last chance. Let's really try to do it right. So, for example, Petraeus says to his subordinates, I want all of you to, to act as if this is your last tour of duty in the military. Don't worry about your futures. Do it now. And also, we will all leave Iraq with our integrity intact, an implicit criticism of their predecessors. 